So for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient Anthony, and Anthony is being treated in aquatic therapy for severe osteoarthrosis in his bilateral knees. The patient is being treated in cool water to improve exercise tolerance. If the patient is immersed up to the head in water, which of the following physiologic responses is the least likely expected? So we have A, bradycardia. B, peripheral vasoconstriction, C, tachycardia, and D is increased central venous pressure. All right, so let's take a look at this one. We start off, we have Anthony. He's being treated in the aquatic therapy environment for severe osteoarthrosis in his bilateral knees. Now, we know that osteoarthrosis, osteoarthritis, uh, that comes along with quite a bit of pain, right? One of the interventions that is really great for that population is aquatic therapy because the buoyancy unloads the joints, all right? So the fact that we're using aquatic therapy here, I love it. It makes sense. Let's move on to the next sentence. It says the patient is being treated in cool water to improve exercise tolerance. I want to slow up there for a minute too. There's different water temperatures that we can treat our patients in, right? You know, some patients don't do well in the hotter environment. Some patients need that cool water. But here it says to improve exercise tolerance. And that's true. Think about it this way. Think about if you jumped in like a really hot pool. And you started moving around and doing some exercises. One thing that happens to the body is it gets overheated, right? And so when it gets overheated, that means you're burning more energy. And then therefore, your exercise tolerance is going to be lower. So it makes sense that this patient is exercising in the cool water as well. Now, if the patient is immersed up to the head in water, it says, which of the following physiologic responses is the least likely expected? Now, that's the question stem, the last sentence right there. And I want to just make something known. For those of you who are about to take your MPTE, it's really important that you you always watch for when it says things like least because you're so used to looking for like most and you're just in this habit of picking the most or the best answer, right? You always want to make sure that you're picking the right answer because it says least here. So let's go over these answer choices. It says A, bradycardia, B, peripheral vasoconstriction, C, tachycardia, D, increased venous pressure. Let's knock them out one by one. Bradycardia, so decreased heart rate. Heart rate that we know is below 60 beats per minute. So is this something that we really would expect here? I mean, the patient's in the cool water. They're immersed up to the head. Is this something that we expect? Now, I will tell you one thing that I never freaking learned in PT school, a hidden concept to start helping you get get these types of questions right. Have you ever heard of the term diving reflex before? Diving reflex. Diving reflex is the body's response to being immersed, typically in cold water, but immersed up to the head level in water. It's a physiologic response. So let me tell you a little bit about it. So if you're immersed in cool water or up to the head in water, the body tries to protect its vital organs. Y'all tell me right now, how would the body start to protect the vital organs? Well, it blocks the highways of blood reaching out to the periphery. It does like this vasoconstriction. It stops all the blood from getting out to the periphery and it tries to keep that blood in the central system with the heart and the brain. and It tries to keep that blood flow near the vital organs in order to protect them, all right? So I expect that. The one thing that happens with the diving reflex, though, is is bradycardia. It decreases the heart rate. And think about why that would really happen. Hmm. So if you think about it, if we have an increased heart rate, does that burn more energy, y'all? Or is that like a decreased amount of energy that would be burned? Right? Do you think that there would be more heat loss and all that with the heart pumping really fast or less? You should be saying, well, the body's working less uh, or, or, or at a less level or the body's not working as hard if we have a decreased heart rate. It's what the body tries to do. If you jump into the water in a cool environment, the heart rate actually decreases. 
in order to preserve energy, in order to preserve the blood flow, keep it into the, vi of the, the most vital organs, the visceral organs, and preserve life. All right, that is that process. It's called the diving reflex. So guess what? I expect bradycardia. That makes a ton of sense. I expect peripheral vasoconstriction as well, which is B. All right, so I can already start to eliminate both of those answers, y'all, right now, just by that purpose alone. All right, so let's look at C. C says tachycardia. Now, tachycardia, we know that that's the increased heart rate above 100. Is that something that we would expect? Mm. Being with the diving reflex that I just talked to you about, we wouldn't expect the heart to be going out of control or beating really fast. Why? It would burn a lot of energy. And we know that the body's trying to conserve because this is a, a reflex, y'all. This is a, a protective reflex that the body's doing. We would not expect tachycardia. But here's the deal. Let's go back up to the question stem. It says, which of the following physiologic responses is the least likely expected? So C right now is the best answer. But let's take a look at D here. D says increased central venous pressure. Now, as you go into the water, right? And you go in up to your knees and then you go into up to your hips and to the chest and up to the head level. Is there more hydrostatic pressure? You know that pressure that's on the body that, that is just exerted from all aspects? Is there more or less? You should be saying the further you go into the water, the more hydrostatic pressure there is. Well, guess what, y'all? The further you go into the water, the more that the water starts to push all that blood flow up towards the heart. Therefore, it increases central venous pressure. It's increasing the amount of fluid that's getting back to the heart, which increases the central venous pressure. I do expect that to occur. All right. And therefore D is not the best answer here. All right. Our final answer y'all is C tachycardia. I know this one's a little crazy y'all. This one's a little crazy. Congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. It's not easy. One thing I want you to remember that truly I never understood was that diving reflex. You know, if your patient gets into the cool water, about 80 degrees Fahrenheit or less, they're going to have this diving reflex. So you're going to have the bradycardia. You're going to have the peripheral vasoconstriction in order to protect those vital organs. All right. But also, as you continue to go deeper into the pool, you need to know that we're going to have increased central venous pressure, increased fluid that's getting back to the heart. You need to remember those principles for your MPTE. These are common principles that are tested on.